Welcome back to the Epic Homestead. Today, the Machete Boys are in town. Sing, 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 sing. That wasn't that good. <laughs> you heard us right. Both Jacques and I equipped ourselves with a machete. Why don't you display yours? Why don't you display yours for the people? It's uh, honestly pretty good looking. It, yeah, honestly, <laughs> yours is a better looking machete, but yours is a Golok. A Golok? Yeah. G Condor Golok. Yeah. And uh, let's just say it's uh, pretty sharp. You didn't cut anything, <laughs> did you? But I have a bushcraft <laughs> machete here. And why are we sitting here in front of you today? Because this cover crop that we planted a long time ago, basically to improve the soil, but also to prevent runoff into the pond, which there's been a lot of improvements to, it is seeding. You can actually see there's all this random seed heads here from radish. These aren't quite mature, which means that if we chop and drop it right now, we're not gonna spread them all over the place. It's a great time. Pretty good. Is it? Honestly, better than a radish. Honestly, it's a little sweet. Yeah. Here's the other little wrinkle is we actually, put, <laughs> we planted like a hundred potatoes in here. We don't see a single <laughs> potato leaf, let alone a potato. I waited through here and I couldn't find a So what we're potato. gonna do is hack and slash this down. We're using the chetties to chop and drop the cover crop as well as harvest a bunch of other stuff out here. Get away from me, Jacques, <laughs> because I don't think we need to be anywhere near each other while we do this. I think we shouldn't be. I'm gonna give the inaugural. <laughs> oh. I mean, that's pretty good, right? That's pretty good. That's pretty good. I might do just like crazy style. Well, just, give, okay, just give, get me, weird. give me your best, give me All your right, best chop. See. What the hell? <laughs> I'm just gonna get weird. Feels like I'm going through a jungle right now. There's those things called rage rooms online that you can look up and you go in and you pay like a hundred bucks and they give you like seven plates and you can smash <laughs> okay, them. Yeah. This is way better than a rage way room. Way better. And it improves your soil. <laughs> what is that? Is that Bob? What's in Bobka's? Did she catch something? Did she get a lizard? There's a lizard in her mouth. Bobka, did you kill it? She's. She's in a different mental state. She doesn't even know you're there. Human. No, but she probably bit it, so. Oh! <laughs> okay, well. Anyway. Back to the task <laughs> at hand. This is why you cover crop, right? You get this fatty daikon. This one's actually chopped already. But you can see how this pushes soil out of the way, right? Like this daikon is slamming down into the soil and actually spreading, basically, soil open. And then when this dies, it will rot out and be decomposing and then that soil is, is more yeah, open. It's gonna aerate it all. Yeah. All right, I think uh, you should try going into this thick area and just, Oh. all right, get in there. One man, <laughs> one machete. <laughs> that wasn't that good, <laughs> that wasn't that good. <sighs> that was pretty good. That was, and look at, look the at that form. Look at that follow through, that form right there. <laughs> Let's do it. This is probably the- So fun. Something I never expected to do in the garden. No. Another way you could do this, besides this absurdity that we're doing, <laughs> is you could get big wooden planks and fold, right. and step and fold. You tie rope to the plank and you step and fold it down. This is more fun. And uh, what I think we're gonna do here, chop, level till it in, almost as our way of one tilling in organic matter, because we haven't done yeah, that we've here. Yeah, we've never done anything here. And then form and then grow a big mound of stuff in this for, for this season. Almost like a wild field. Yeah. Yeah, but be, with productive edibles. Honestly, I think it'll be great for like pumpkins, watermelons. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I just found Papa, Radi Papa Radicchio here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, There's so many pods on there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> what do you think? I think that's pretty good for now. It's pretty good. That part is done in the cleanup and spring prep. What we want to do now is a little bit of cleanup in the beds and kind of walk you around and show you what's going on at the homestead. Whew. Okay. That was work. We're back here in the beet bed. And if you remember from, I don't know, five, six videos ago, we did this sort of scatter and see method. And as you can see, we have done pretty well with it. I've actually harvested most of this row, Jacques. And you actually did too. Yeah, you I took grabbed a couple home. beets. Let's go ahead and do some harvesting. I don't even remember what we all planted in here. No, I know there's a lot of golden beets. I'm gonna find out the... Yeah, I mean, these are some smaller sized beets because we didn't really space them out at all. We just put them in. Um, but there are gonna be some honkers in here for sure. I mean, if you look around, you'll see that there's plenty of nasturtiums We got here. too many nasturtiums, so we'll take that out for now. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Yours boy. is better than mine. <laughs> oh, boy. 
Oh, you got like four solid guys right there. Yeah. Yeah. Now what we won't be doing personally at least is I'm not gonna be using the beet greens on this poll. It's first of all too many for me to yeah. use. Um, and I, I'm just gonna eat the beets. And that's there's nothing wrong with not using every single piece of the plant, especially when you're just gonna recycle these nutrients back in with the compost. It's not really the end of the world. Yeah. Oh look, your favorite. Earwigs. Earwigs. Oh, disgusting. Oh dude. my god. I'm starting to stand up. Well, I'm doing oh they're on my <laughs> Yeah, they actually <laughs> Honestly, all bugs have a place in the ecosystem, <laughs> but there's too, you know, there's too many, and that they look balance. like that. It's it's not. Oh, oh. <laughs> yo, those are perfect. That's all golden too. Yeah, like baby golden beets. Oh, this is called fifteen dollars to a <laughs> yeah. rent fancy restaurant right here. That's probably fifteen bucks. Money does grow on trees and in the ground. <laughs> the stack, just like the cabbages, we're gonna do a little process and chat. Why don't you start out with this guy here? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. Honestly, pretty no, it's easy. fine, it's pretty fine. Easy. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna chop like this, and I'm gonna toss, and we'll just give the beet greens to the chickens, really. There you go. So this is just a pre-process, because really in a perfect world, what you do is, I'll use a bigger one probably, um, is you chop. I'm leaving the, uh, Little stem the top stem on, but really what you do at this point is do the scrub, right? You do a scrub, and then you remove this, and then you remove this, and then if you're processing it that day, what I found really good, as we keep on going here, is um, here's what I did. So basically did a wash, right? Right. And I did this process, I told you, cut the tail, cut the top just a little bit to get the sort of the base stem off. Yep. Then I pressure cooked it okay. for 15 minutes high pressure. So that basically full cooked it, right? Were you doing golden or red? Both. Oh, okay. And then the what happened is the skin, you let it cool, the skin comes right off. Cause you've cut the bottom and the top, right? Right. So now there's a path for the skin to come off and it worked really, really well. And then what I did is I diced, I, I diced it, I chilled it, feta, arugula, lettuce, salt, pepper, beets, problem solved. I yeah. think that all checks out. It was, honestly. it was that fantastic. Really good. No, it was really good, especially, but here's the thing. You have to chill the beets before you put them in the salad. Right. Otherwise the cheese gets weird. Oh, I so, can see that. You know? Yeah, there's a lot of ways to enjoy beets. For me personally, raw is typically not my way. Um, but with golden, I can see it. Yeah, golden is the one that I, I prefer it because it doesn't have that kind of iron I'm not coming in on this one raw. I'll just no. say that. I'm not going to. It's but, but too golden, much iron flavor. Golden, I don't, eh, I was gonna go. I mean, other classic, of course, is borscht, mm -hmm. which honestly is really good. I, we just made some borscht the other day and I'll say this, I wasn't expecting to like it, but really? I was really into it. Does, does borscht have a Bulgarian counterpart recipe that's like kind of similar or no? No, nah, not that I know of. It's definitely, um, you know, in Ukraine it's very popular and it's just a classic kind of Eastern European. I don't know who claims to own it. Yeah. Uh, but it's just, honestly, it's just really good. It could get really savory, finish it with like a little sour cream. It's wonderful. What I think we'll do is just feed at least some of that pile to the chickens. Yeah. See what they think. I'm gonna take just a handful of these beet greens and see what the Epic Chicks think of them. Not all of them, it'd be way too much. So let's go ahead and see them. You guys haven't seen them in quite some time. They're a lot bigger, a lot chunkier. And we made some modifications to the coop as well. So the first thing we did here is, I gotta remove these blocks, but basically we put the Predator apron down, which is just a basically hard wire cloth. I think it's two by three inch cloth. When I say cloth, I actually mean metal though. It's just a weird name for it. We stapled it to the actual coop and then we stapled the other end down so nothing can get in here. I also put carabiners on all the latches. So I have to physically use this carabiner to get it off. So no predator, that's not a human at least, can figure this one out. So let's go on inside. They're getting pretty excited. Okay, girls. Let's just wait and see what they do. So here's our Rhode Island Red right here. Gucci, the gold laced Wyandotte. We have Silver, which I don't know, that's not her real name, but she's a Silver laced Wyandotte. We've got Lavender right there, that's the Lavender Orpington. We have the Buff Orpington who usually is a little bit solo. She's a little like, I'm doing my own thing. And then what's quickly become actually one of my favorite little hens here is the Cream Leg Bar. You can see this little Mohawky type of vibe that she has going on. But you can see, they absolutely dominate the greens when they're thrown in. Anything new they tend to really like, but 
I mean, you see the, the remnants here. This, there used to be a huge cabbage here. There used to be a huge Brussels sprout and they've actually dominated it. Now you still have to give them their normal feed because this is what's basically formulated perfectly for chickens. But adding some of this extra, they've really, really enjoyed. So this is a little update. We'll do a full video soon on the chicks and some changes we're making to the inside of the coop. But this is a way, if you're not gonna use your beet greens or something like that, toss them to the chickens, they'll still make a good use in the garden. Pretty big harvest today of beets, certainly, but also of this cover crop here. There's a lot that we're gonna do in that spot. I'm actually curious what you guys wanna see down in the comments, but I wanna tease you with a couple things that we have changed. First of all, look at this artichoke, absolutely popping, and that's gonna get harvested pretty soon. But also, if you look over here in the orchard, you'll see that we have changed that fence. It used to be this old white vinyl fence. We're actually rebuilding the fence out here to have it be cohesive. And the biggest, most exciting change really is, let me show you, right over here, the irrigation systems. So we finally have irrigation here at the homestead in these raised beds. And the coolest part about these, which is actually a kit that will be available soon, but the thing that we really like, we, Jock and I designed this, we went through like 10 or 12 different rounds of this, is number one, it comes up into the bed. Now you could do it with a hose for sure, but what happens is you've got four drip tape lines. So you got those on six inch emitters. So great coverage of drip, but then you see these right here. These are called vortex sprayers and they actually spray this perfect mist right over the bed. So let's say you were direct sowing instead of transplanting in. If you're direct sowing, you'd be limited kind of to where these drip lines are. If you direct sow with these vortex, you can plant things anywhere you want run the vortex and it has a perfect mist so you get good coverage and then you switch over to drip when they mature so we're switching that over pretty soon here you'll see a video on that but anyways hope you guys enjoyed the epic homesteading videos more videos coming out twice a week now this season stay tuned good luck in the garden and keep on growing